Great. So last week in my inbox, somebody sent in a question and it said, when your kids get jobs, how many hours, days a week do they work? And do they still do, quote, all the classes and extracurriculars as well? And I thought it would be a great topic to talk about here with all. Hi, I'm Mary Wilson. It's great to have you all here. Um, I am a homeschooling mom of four who are now all young adults. My kids are now all young adults and teenagers. My kids are 22, 20, 17, and 15. So I still have two boys in high school and my daughters have both graduated high school. One has graduated college and is now working full time in the healthcare industry. All right. Um, so how did we handle kids getting jobs? All of my kids had a job by the time they were about 16. My oldest actually started working much earlier at 14, though almost 15. And my youngest is also working now at 15 years old. And of course, as a homeschooling family, we have to figure out how to balance this with their other activities and their school schedule. So it's going to look different in every household. But the first thing you need to think about is where things fall in your household in terms of a hierarchy, if there is one. So if you separate activities into like school, meaning the academics, the things you're doing um, for the school year to work on the transcript, math, history, English, science, foreign language, any electives, that sort of thing. Then you have activities. To me, activities can include theater, soccer, any other sports, scouting, um, different clubs, any kind of activity, maybe church activities. Um, that's another layer of things that we're balancing. And then now enters jobs, <laughs> which can be weekly, like scheduled jobs. Like right now, my son is working every Thursday from 9.30 to 2. Or it can be retail work, which changes um, on a regular basis and makes things really interesting. <laughs> so we have three things, school activities and jobs. Um, you may have these things in like a hierarchy of which ones you kind of value more over the others. And that may dictate how you schedule things and the way your family um, makes it work. For me, all of these things, while they are separate categories, have the same value. They are all kind of top tier and I'm not gonna pit one against the other and we're gonna kind of make them all work to be important. So what I mean, I'm not going to pit one against the other. I'm not going to threaten the completion of one in particular school to allow you to do the other ones. So there's not going to be any, hey, if you don't get your math done, you're not going to basketball tonight. Or hey, if you don't get your math done, you're going to have to explain that to your boss when you don't go to work. Um, all of those sorts of things. It's not going to happen. I see education and educating my children as kind of looking at the whole person, which includes all three of these columns. So I don't want to give one more priority over the other. So when my child accepts a job, you know, we talk about what they're going to be able to handle. And then it has now the same priority as these other categories. Now, that doesn't mean one of them doesn't take priority at some given moment. While I won't pit them against each other, we might have a week where we feel really behind in school. And so we talk about how can we make school a priority this week and maybe take a night off of a practice if it's a time in the season that you're allowed to miss. Um, can you take off some extra hours next week from work so we can really get caught up? Whatever it is. We might have a sports tournament. And I know my son has one in March. We're going to be gone for an entire week. You know, what school can we get done on the road? What can we get done before we go? What can we just let go that week and kind of pick up when we get back? Um, obviously, we take off work. So at any given time, one of these three categories might kind of take the front seat, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily more important. We're just trying to give it the attention it deserves at that moment. Um, and there could be a time with work. Um, job training, got to make some extra time. A job training schedule might not be as flexible as once you're um, given the hours 
that you can work. There might also be times like during the holiday season where retail work, they're looking for more employees. Can we give more time to that job that's important to my kids, that they enjoy, that's teaching them all sorts of things, responsibility and leadership and um, interacting with people? unpleasant people at times. Um, can we give that a little bit of a priority at that season and kind of back off some other things? So while I see these as different categories, I don't see any one in particular as more important than the other ones. Um, all right, so that's kind of how it works in our house. It might not work that way in your house and that's okay, but the way I handle what I'm gonna describe and how it looks in our house is based on what I just described. I want my kids to be able to have all three of these categories and they're all important in the development of the whole person to me. Um, oh, and in terms of, yes, I don't pit the activities against one another, but I will take away, you know, video games or the phone or something else if needed to catch up on something if someone's really procrastinating. So you might go to basketball, but when you get home, you're not watching a show or getting on the computer or calling your friends until your math's done. So there are things that won't happen above these three categories, you know, so um, hanging out with friends in the neighborhood, playing video games, that kind of stuff is below all of these categories that I was talking about. Um, though, with homeschoolers, I do want to add, I'm not likely to take away like a planned social activity. That would be under activities to me. You know, even if it's just fun, a murder mystery party, a um, co-op activity, I'm probably not likely to take that away either. Again, we will work it out some other some other way to get academics or whatever's lagging to get that caught up. I will say with all that though, I've never really had a kid who was completely resistant to doing things that I felt like I had to really come in strong in some way. I don't know what I would do, um, so I can't speak to that. I've had procrastinators and I've had complainers and I've had people resisting and putting it off and we've had to go through like, let's just get this done and then we can go out for Starbucks or let's just get it. We've had to do that sort of thing, but I'm not gonna pit these activities against each other. Okay, so how much work have my kids been able to handle really depends on each kid and their own priorities and goals and um, what they love, their personalities. So I just thought I'd walk you through um, each of my kids and what it's looked like. But first, when my children are old enough to get a job, um, which is around 16 in this house, like I said, because at 16, they begin to get bills. They start paying for their cell phone. Um, if they're driving, they're paying for gas. They pay for their room and board if they're going away to college, so they're starting to save up for that. So there are some needs that they're starting to see. Birthday gifts for friends, social activities and events. We, parents in the house no longer are paying for those things. So it does drive the need and the desire to have a job because I happen to think that's a really great thing to learn responsibility and leadership and all sorts of things. Um, that may not be how your house works and that's fine. Your kids might have jobs for other reasons. Maybe you don't want your high schoolers to have jobs. You want them to be able to relax and invest their time in other things. That's totally fine as well. This is just how we have worked it. Um, so my oldest and my youngest are my extroverts. So my oldest really needed out of the house. She wanted to be with peers. She wanted responsibility. She's a natural born leader, a teacher, instructor. So she began coaching gymnastics when she was 14, about to turn 15. And she continued to do that one night, two nights a week. I mean, into college and she would work a lot of times at their summer camp. She ended up help running their summer camp. So it was an excellent job for her. Then she also um, began to work at a local camp. They did summer camps and during the school year, they run programs for homeschoolers and they have enrichment club activities on Tuesdays and Thursdays for kindergarten through like sixth grade. And she began as a teacher assistant. And before we knew it, she was helping to kind of run that as well. And she worked two full days a week, nine to eight to three. Um, it was a lot. Like we were losing two full school days. So one of the big things I talked to all of my kids about, this is what I meant to say earlier, is I talked to them about the fact that taking on a job means that you might now have to do work in the evenings and you might have to do work, schoolwork on the weekends 
Are they prepared to do that? That is typical for a high schooler to have to work in the evenings and to have to work on weekends. So their friends are doing it who are in public school. And we just kind of talk through what that might mean and what that might look like to be able to enter um, into a working environment. So my daughter knew that, that she would come home from work. And yes, it was three o'clock and normally her school day would be done, but it wasn't at this point. So she could take a little break, but then it was time to start working on some of her subjects. It also meant that she was loving this. So academics, um, we were getting things done, but we were not doing over you know, an abundance of things anymore. I had released her from morning time with everyone. Um, she didn't need to do that anymore. She wasn't part of our read alouds. We kind of minimized it so she could start doing the things that were really valuable to her. And what I love about this is that her time working at that camp is where she discovered her love um, for working in the healthcare and health services field. We always thought maybe she'd be a teacher, but it was at the camp when she started working at, with the medical staff that she was like, actually, I really love this. I love working with kids with special needs. I love working in the healthcare. And she's a recreational therapist now. So it was valuable and it was time well spent for her. And I'm really glad we did it and that we made it just as important as the other things in her life. Um, I did give her leadership credit on her transcript. I made a class, I called it leadership, maybe leadership skills, something like that. I had taken a class my senior year in high school called leadership skills or something. So I added a few titles like habits of highly effective teenager and do hard things and some other things at the time that I thought were great titles. And she read those in addition. Um, and we did have a year, it was probably the year she was working two full days a week that history was not top notch. <laughs> So that kind of happened. All right. My second daughter began um, retail work at um, Chick-fil-A. Let me tell you, you want leadership skills and excellent training. That is the job to start with. Um, for her, academics was kind of like an emotional drain. She does not like math. She does not like science. She, at least at that time, she loves art. She loves creating. She loves theater. Uh, she loves designing. She is now into cosplay. She's 20 years old. She makes amazing costumes, taught herself all sorts of things to be able to do that. And she is working on an AA in marketing and advertising and graphic design. So that fits her perfectly. So um, the academics, we were checking boxes in high school. What do you need to do to be able to graduate? Her goal was to go to community college, to do advertising, graphic design. Um, so really for her, the retail work, she was loving. She was loving saving up money. She has since bought herself a car. Um, so she actually, since getting into college, has, works about 20 hours a week. She may have done that her senior year also. She was taking dual enrollment classes and she did, I think, nine, nine credits and nine credits at college. And so she was also balancing that with working because she loved work. Now she works the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right now, I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So she does have days that are focused on school. But that's what we're always working out is that balance and how it looks for each child, again, depending on their goals. She is not my extrovert. So she spends a lot more time at home. She's more content. Um, these days, she gets out a lot more. But in high school was a little more content at home. Um, my third child loves academics. <laughs> Like he was so excited to take calc at the community college this semester. He was thrilled. He wants to um, be a physicist. He loves math, science, all those things. So for him, while he got a job and he works more in the summer, his junior year in high school, he only worked one day a week. He gave them Saturdays. He would work on Saturday. So he basically worked most Saturday mornings. And if he didn't work Saturday then and he wasn't scheduled, then he didn't work that week. Um, he actually said at the start of his senior year that he'd like to work more. So when we were making his schedule, he want, he took only Monday, Wednesday, class, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes so he could offer Tuesday and Thursday to work because he found he could balance it and he was able to do it. But as you can see, all three are equal, but in his personality, the academics, he wanted to invest more time, more energy, more of himself there. So he backed off the other things. Now that he's kind of got it down, he's loving college, he's gotten the balance out. So his senior year, he's now also investing more time in working. Now, my third child, my other extrovert, um, 
is home with me a lot because his siblings are all working, doing jobs. It's not like when my oldest started working and I was still homeschooling the other three. He is home with me. It's just me and him. <laughs> so um, he definitely needs me to find and schedule things out of the house for him. So he does play sports. A lot of his classes are outside the house. So you need to know that English and science are both in local classes. Math he does with Mr. D, even though I do a lot of the like teaching with him, we watch the video together and I kind of review it. And then history he is doing throughout school. I'm also helping with that and his foreign language is on out school. So he has a lot of people outside of me giving him deadlines, giving him instructions and that kind of thing. So he has to keep up with that. But we did decide to go ahead and add one day a week working. So he works, he gets there at 930, right after his Spanish class ends at 915. We hop in the car, I run him up to camp and he works 930 to two on Thursdays. And um, we had the same talk, like that might mean that Friday where we used to kind of make it a little more chill, it might mean we have more work to do because we've got to catch up if there are things you didn't get to Thursday night. So today when he got home from work, um, I happened to be recording this on a Thursday, um, he relaxed a bit, had lunch, and then he wanted to go meet friends and play basketball at the YMCA. So he did that. Again, all three of these things are extremely important to me. You know, the physical activity, the activities, basketball for him, um, his job. He does have schoolwork. And I said to him, that probably means you're going to need to do at least your math tonight. And then we can leave off Friday some of the other subjects. It's easier to double up on the history and to check in with the science um, at this point. So it's just kind of always that balance. I panicked a lot more about it with my first child. Like, oh my goodness, we're losing all this time. Is this going to work out? Um, what's going to happen? And I'm just less panicked about it with my last child because I know it is going to work out. Um, I know we will get those things accomplished. And I know what I'm helping to create is a whole person, a well-rounded person who's going to enter life with the skills to also balance these things. You know, how to balance friends and activities with work and commitments, how to schedule days off, how to um, figure out what your priorities are each week. So that is kind of how it has worked in our house. Let me see if there's anything else here. Um, yeah. So that's generally what it looks like. I think the big key was that adjustment. Oh, this is what I wanted to add. So while I have told my kids, you might have to do work on the weekends, you might have to do work on the evenings. I have set boundaries around when I am willing to be available. And that's important as a homeschool mom. So if you are their math teacher, then you might say, Hey, you need to have math done by this time, or I'm available today at this time and this time you need to do math at that time with me. I will not be available tonight. So you need to put a different subject off for tonight. So you want to go play basketball with friends. That's fine. But we need to get these things done because I am responsible for them with you. That's always an ongoing conversation. Um, and always was with all of my kids because I don't really love working in the evening and I don't feel like doing school on the weekend. So you can, if you're going to choose to leave a subject off of the, to the weekend, it's going to be one that you're doing mainly independently. Don't get me wrong. I have flexibility in my boundaries as well. There are times where I edit a paper on the weekends or I might help review something for math and, and we make it work. But in general, I try to stick, um, especially if I have someone kind of procrastinating, putting things off, well, I'm not going to be available to you in the evening. So you're just going to now have to wait till the next day. And that means if something comes up, um, we're going to have to get this subject done before, you know, you can go do that thing. So constant communication, balance, figuring out each child. There's no rules for all of it. But I will say I have been so grateful that we made um, having some sort of job outside of the house, a priority for our high schoolers. They have learned such invaluable skills. They've learned things about themselves. Um, they just had to interact with peers in a whole different way, customers at retail jobs. Um, they've discovered things about themselves. They've seen things they're good at. They've handled more than they probably thought they could. And it has been a really great thing. So I'm sure it will be for my son right now who just started this semester. So far, it's going really well. And um, I'm sure we'll continue to do so. 
All right. I am so glad somebody emailed this question. I thought it was such a great one. If you have other questions that you would love for me to discuss in a video, we'll make a little Q&A playlist down there. Go ahead and drop it in the comments. Um, and if you have other questions or comments or want to share how you have done this in your house, please feel free and we can continue the discussion in the comments. All right, everyone. Thanks so much.